um, the semantic table is basically the same except you add some more information. Um, you can start by adding a caption right after the table first table element. Um, and then probably the most important thing is the t-head element, which uh, everything contained in here will be marked as a head element or, or head data. So head one and head two show up in bold, although they can be styled differently. The importance is not the way it looks, but the fact that this is the um, part of, this, of the table that uh, will define everything else in that row or column. And then TH instead of TD stands for table header, um, but it's basically the same as a TD cell, except that it has the semantic meaning that it's the head. Um, so this is fairly simple. Um, we've just got two columns and two rows, and they vertically correspond down. So content two is uh, corresponding to head two. And then the caption describes the entire table. It can get more complicated in the example I showed you where we not only want the head level here, this first row, to be a header, but we want the first cell in each row to also be a header. So we've got this T head wrapping the table row, indicating that the entire row is a header, and then each of the cells had the TH, table header, instead of table data tag. But when it gets to the T body, which is the main content, we still need to indicate that the first item in each row is a header. So we can use this TH element. And that tells us that each one of these is made of the heading in the, uh, in the table. Now if we want to get even more semantic, we can look at the caption. I didn't say that correctly. Shows up right down here. Now the caption will describe everything in the entire table. So the caption actually applies to the whole table. And you can, uh, there's actually some more complicated rules, but we won't go into it right now. But for a semantic table, the basics are caption, a table head, and a table body, and then making use of the table header versus table data cells.